Inside this video right here, we're going to talk about exactly what you need to know for both behavioral and psychiatric disorders. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's Paramedic Coach, and make sure to smash and annihilate that like button if you're watching this video right now. Subscribe to the Paramedic Coach and click the notification bell to join our Paramedic Coach Army here now today. What we're gonna talk about is starting from cognitive disorders, behavioral, moving on to, down the line, psychiatric disorders. You need to know whether you're an EMT or a paramedic. So let's dive into it. It's a full overview. Okay, now here we go. Now, cognitive disorders. What does it to do with is the word cognition. Cognition has to do with, in very simple terms, how sharp are you? How alert are you to what's going on in the world around you. So delirium is an abrupt, disoriented state with time and place, with delusions or hallucinations. Notice the word I underline is abrupt. So the way to tell the difference between dementia and delirium is how fast it comes on. So delirium is I'm fine, everything's good, whap, I'm delirious, I'm in delirium. Dementia is slowly and surely over time piece by piece, little by little, have the inability to learn new things or remember events. Now let's talk about the medications that you might see on a med list for someone who has dementia. Patients on Aricep are usually in the early to mid stages of dementia. Patients on Nemenda, also known as Memantine, the generic name, they are usually in the mid to longer stage of, of dementia, right? So our next topic here in today's video is gonna be schizophrenia. Now, I wanna let you know, before we get started with this, you will see a lot of schizophrenic patients out in EMS. You will see them probably almost weekly, all right? Now, why is that? Because schizophrenic patients, okay, are needed to be most of the time on lifelong therapy for their illness. Now here's the deal with schizophrenic patients. The medicines they take that make them actually feel better will have blocked the dopamine in their brain. Now does that make you feel particularly great? Not really. So patients are going to be on and off, on and off their meds, which is why they end up like this when they call 911. Now schizophrenia is the definition is recurrent, means it keeps coming up, episodes of psychotic behavior. What is psychotic behavior? What is, that's a general term. Psychotic behavior means the inability to recognize or acknowledge reality. That's psychotic behavior. A schizophrenic patient, okay, who is constantly not taking their medications, okay, to not have psychotic events or behaviors will present with an inability to recognize or acknowledge reality, the hallmark is paranoia. Intense feelings of mistrust or hearing voices with demands. Imagine you walking around every day hearing voices in your head telling you what you can do, what you can't do. That's the life someone with schizophrenia, okay? With the same time, having intense feelings of mistrust in other people that may be trying to help. I want to give you a few more pearls about schizophrenia, then we're going to talk about medications that you're going to see on their med list. Remember, this is what makes a great EMS provider, is that med list, you got to know your prescription meds cold and nobody talks about it. If you want to learn more about them, click the link down below and you'll see my Paramed Coach course, talk a lot about them. Onset of illness, okay, we have childhood to early 30s. So what does that mean? Now, for men, adolescence, okay, to about early 20s. Honestly, for women, though, is later. It actually can be as late as the early 30s as well. Lifelong therapy, okay?
okay, are the main meds that you're going to see for a schizophrenic patient, all right? So what we have here first is Seroquel, we have Zyprexa, these are, these are the names you're going to see the brands, but these are generics. A lot of medalists are just generics. So you want to be, you want to know the brand name, so you know the med, how people will talk about it. But on the med list, you want to know the generic as well, okay? You want to be comfortable seeing that and pick up on the first piece here, okay? So Quint, Olanz, Respair, Zyprats. You remember that and go, oh wait, that's an that's a antipsychotic medication. This patient might have schizophrenia, okay? So we have Seroquel, Zyprexa, Resperidol, Geodon, Thorazine, Haldol, and these are your generic. I just wanted to find for you OCD and PTSD. A patient with OCD, um, they're gonna have stress and anxiety about certain thoughts or rituals. The lights on off a certain way, if they wash your hands a certain way, if they close a door a certain way, if they walk in a room a certain way. None of it particularly will make sense to someone who does not have the disorder. But to that person, it, it's everything, of course. It makes perfect sense. It's very clever to hide these things from close family and friends and just regular people, okay? So that's OCD. And PTSD is being very serious, and you really gotta think about this when you go to a case of PTSD in the ambulance. A severe anxiety reaction to a former severe psychological social event. It could be a rape, that could be a murder, that could be something terrible that they witnessed, that could be military service, that could be something that, that happened to them as a first responder, by the way, or an EMS here, okay? Or a cop, fireman, whatever it might be, okay? That could be something that terrible that happened to them in their family. Something, some sort of event that the average person would not witness. Something so groundbreaking, it's a shock to the system. That is why substance abuse is very common in this. And you may get patients in the ambulance that have PTSD that are going through this severe anxiety reaction. They think they're in another place, all right? They're not, they're not there. It's PTSD, okay? So let's talk now about depression. You may think that you understand depression, but I want to bring it down for you. What you may see, but also in a mnemonic for you as well. Mood disorder. So something that affects your mood. The, the next mood disorder we're going to talk about is bipolar. Now depression has to do with sadness, despair, and disencouragement. Now the mnemonic is in sad cages. I N interests. So you lose faith. You don't love the interests that you were so much involved with previously before depression. So you lose lack of interest. Sleep. Your sleep is affected. Okay, sometimes it can cause you're not sleeping enough. Other times what can happen in depression is that you stay in bed all day. If you're thinking about that, you just don't want to get out of bed. That's what I think about when it comes to sleep. Appetite. Appetite when it comes to depression, again, it can go both ways. You may eat more or you may not eat less depending on what type of depression that you're in. But your appetite and your sleep is certainly affected. Your inches are affected. Depressed mood. Well, that goes without saying. That's in the mnemonic. Concentration. You lose lack of focus and clarity on what's important to you in life. Your activity is decreased. You're not doing much of anything, right? Think about someone who's very motivated. They're doing a lot of action, a lot of activity. When you're depressed, curl up in a ball, lay in bed. Activity. Guilt. You start to feel guilty about so many things that you're not, because of that lack of activity, because you get guilty that you're not there for other people. Your energy is low in depression. Your energy is super low, super, super low energy. And all of this culminates into you thinking about thoughts of suicide because you're These are the most common depression meds you need to know in the field. First, remember, when we're trying to learn a drug, we start with the brand name. Selexa, Cymbalta, Lexapro, Wellbutrin, Zoloft. The reason. Most commonly, the patient who knows the meds they take are going to know the med name by this, okay? Now, here's a pearl. You're going to know the generic as well. I've had times where they go, oh, yeah, I'm taking a, a medicine for my depression. It starts with an S, uh, something like a, 
Ah, I was talking to ask, what is it? Is it Zoloft, sertraline? Yes. See, this is why you gotta know both, okay? Sertraline is Zoloft, okay? Bupropion as well, Butrin, okay? We have the generics up here for Celexa, Cymbalta, and that's the part you can see here. Something interesting here. Look at the generic here for Celexa. That same word is inside of the generic for Lexapro. Just something interesting I like you to notice. Now again, if you look here, look at the end dates. I and E, I and E. Pram, Pram. It's not a rule. Something to notice that might put you in the right direction when you're first starting out. Now let's talk about bipolar disorder. What bipolar disorder has to do with is alternating between mania and depression. Biphasic, so there's two parts, emotional disorder, which depressive and manic episodes alternate. Now, they could alternate, could be in a matter of a few days, could be a matter of moments, could be a matter of weeks or months, depending on the patient. Mania has different levels, could be mild to severe. Okay, now patients with bipolar disorder, when they're in severe mania, will do things that aren't just what you're think, maybe thinking of. Severe mania has to do with things that may harm themselves or harm other people or people that they love around them. That's severe mania. Severely risky actions that they normally wouldn't take because they're so manic, and that's Severe mania. The definition is right here. You can see the definition of mania right here. But it really has to do with excessive elation. It has to do with a flight of ideas. Okay, think one idea after another, after another, after another. And the patient may be talking rapidly, going into all different types of scenarios, all different types of events. It's almost like they're kind of, yeah, they're all over the place. That's what's going on in their brain when they're in mania. Okay. There are other drugs that may be prescribed for bipolar disorder. There's one hallmark drug you gotta know. It's lithium. If you're one of these three people, if you're preparing for school at any level in EMS, okay, if you're in school right now and you wanna get the best grades you can and understand the why behind what you're doing, and three, you are preparing for NREMT, again, at any level, I have a program for you. Click the link down below and don't take my word for it. Listen to the student results on the screen down below. Click that link now. I'm gonna give you instant lifetime access to over 160 videos of content plus a little members community where you can ask me questions in the group while you're studying. I'll see you there, I'll see you inside. Thanks for all the comments, shares, all that. Smash, annihilate that like button. Helps me out with Google and I will see you next time. Cheers kept oh like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um what I noticed, it just, I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there and then I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Adults obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an army medic, um, you gotta prepare yourself. Evan, I know you got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever wanna hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't wanna hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you wanna have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think 
to below passing to seven questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have. I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.